Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sab, and here bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, we're continuing the story of Dominaria, but first, let's quickly go through what happened in our last video. Last time, we covered the story of how Liliana Vess met the Raven Man, a mysterious entity that was seemingly the cause of all the misery in her life. It was he who tricked her into turning her brother into an undead monster, he who led her to the Chain Veil, and, as we learned in the previous story, he who caused Jasu, Liliana's brother, to become a lich pawn of the demon lord Belzenlock, just because Liliana had refused to cooperate with him. Upon realizing that she can't keep hiding her secrets from Gideon, Liliana told him that her brother was turned into a lich knight and general of Belzenlock's forces. The two teamed up with the remaining Benalish forces in the area, and while Gideon was keeping Jasu's monsters occupied, Liliana destroyed her brother. But not before he told her that it was in fact her who did this to him, who brought doom upon their family. With tears in her eyes and anger in her heart, Liliana swore then and there that she'll find Belzenlock and she was going to kill him. But quickly, right before we begin, let me just remind you that you can win free cards and get your name added to the credits of my videos by joining the Vorthos Army on Patreon. Help support the best Vorthos content here on YouTube while also getting your hands on signed mythics for every month you pledge. We're getting so close to our goals of adding animations to these videos and every bit helps. Consider checking it out and visit the link in the description below. Now, back to the lore. We finally pick up with Joyra and the Weatherlight. Last time we saw these two, the Weatherlight was at the bottom of the ocean, but Joyra's assistant, Ziva, was successful in raising the ship to the shore, or at least what was left of it. Either because of time or because of the damage the ship had sustained, all that was left was its strand skeleton and the bulky coil of its engine. Regardless, Joyra was excited to start working on restoring the ship. She had already hired a supply crew that will take care of the ship's restoration, so all that was left was the crew. But who could possibly replace the legendary Weatherlight crew? She did miss her friends, Karn, Venzer, and Joda, but they were all gone now. One missing, one dead, and one possibly unwilling to cooperate with her. No, she needed to find someone else to join her crew, and just as she thought of that, an angel from the Church of Sarah, Tiana, landed next to her. The angel was ecstatic when she saw the ship, so much so that she even started to cry and would have to turn her gaze away from the ship. But neither she nor Joyra knew why. It was a mystery with an answer that would have to wait for now. Hattie, Joyra's assistant, Joyra, and Tiana made their way to the skeleton of the Weatherlight to inspect it and find the most important part of the skyship itself, the Power Stone. This is the same Power Stone that Urza had filled with the energy of an entire plane, collapsing Sarah's realm, the former home to a number of angels residing here on Dominaria, and now, after all this time, the stone is somehow still there. This was a bit worrying at first, because the Power Stone was a sacred object to the Church of Sarah, but it was also a key component to the Weatherlight. Tiana was tasked with observing the reclamation of the Power Stone and returning to the church if it was inert. On first glance, the stone seemed fine, or so Tiana claimed. Joyra and her assistants were suspicious of this. How does this angel know so much about engineering? Angels don't study mechanics, a fact that even Tiana herself confirmed. But somehow, it's all as clear as day to her. Something weird was going on here, so Joyra asked Tiana to take the Power Stone. She is from the Church of Sarah, after all, so maybe the stone will respond to her. At first, nothing seemed to happen, and it seemed the stone was indeed inert. But then, suddenly, as Tiana held the stone, it began glowing with power. The Power Stone, the key component of the Weatherlight, was actually fully functional. With this, Joyra had made up her mind. Tiana will be a member of her crew, and her first task was to supervise the ship's restoration. With the restoration of the Weatherlight underway, it was time to gather the rest of the crew, and Joyra knew exactly who she wanted and where to find them. If the Weatherlight is to bring hope to the people of Dominaria, inspire them to stand against the Cabal, to once more rally under this legendary skyship and her crew, then the crew themselves had to be legendary individuals. Unfortunately, the original crew members were long gone and nothing can change that, but Joyra knew that their names were still spoken with the utmost respect. People will rally behind a Capuchin or a Sisse member of the new Weatherlight, so a Capuchin and a Sisse are what she needs. 
Her first stop will be the great Jamora city, Sakata. It was there that she'll find her first crew member. While exploring the city, Joyra ran into some commotion going on at the city plaza. People were gasping and running away in fear. Joyra learned that a Cabal spy had made his way into the city. Wanting to get a better view, she used the magic of her mechanical owl familiar, magic which allowed her to see through its eyes. The owl took flight, trying to locate the Cabal spy and quickly found it locked in combat with a brown-skinned warrior woman. The woman was easily overpowering the Cabal cleric and this was, in all honesty, Intriguing. The Cabal clerics are known for casting dementia spells to confuse their opponents, but this woman didn't seem to be affected by them at all. Another cleric joined the fray and cast a death orb at the woman, but again, for some reason, the orb didn't seem to make an impact. The cleric cast another spell, but this time, Joyra did manage to take a glance at a golden aura surrounding the woman, like a shield. No, not a shield, but an actual immunity to magic. An immunity that she'd seen once before. This was Shana Sise, a descendant of the legendary Captain Sise, the captain of the Weatherlight. After the battle was won, Joyra asked Shana what happened. Turns out that the Cabal clerics were trying to steal merchant route maps. This is when we learn the true motive behind Bells and Locke's actions. According to Joyra, the Elder Demon is trying to rewrite history and make himself the big evil behind everything that's ever happened on Dominaria. Most of the people from that era are long dead, and there are only a handful of those who remember what really happened in the past. This just makes it easier for the Demon to proclaim that he was the true force behind all evils on Dominaria. The two women briefly spoke, and we learned that Shauna has lived her whole life listening to the tales of the heroic deeds of her ancestors. She craved adventure, and too she craved to make a name for herself, meaning she was more than willing to accept Joyra's invitation to serve aboard the Weatherlight, just like her ancestor did all those centuries ago. With that, the first member of the Skyship's new crew was recruited. Next stop was Benalia City, where Joyra had hoped to recruit Danitha Capuchin. The Weatherlight needs a Capuchin, after all. Unfortunately for her, Danitha wasn't a least bit interested, which came to a shock at first. The woman had explained that she is a knight of Benalia, and that her duty was first and foremost to Benalia. And although the Weatherlight has always been in the heart of combat, the Cabal were attacking towns and villages across Benalia. If she left with Joyra, she would be fighting the Cabal somewhere else, most likely in Urborg. But in the meantime, Benalia would continue to suffer from attacks. No, Danitha made up her mind and returned to her post, leaving Joyra without a Capuchin in her crew, or so it seemed. Just as she and Shauna were about to leave, a young boy caught up to them and asked if he could join the crew instead. The boy's name was Raffi, and he was also a Capuchin. He was young, around 12 years old, but he was a skilled mage, an illusionist, and he was gonna prove it to him. Joyra didn't believe him at first, but after he cast an illusion that made the surrounding look like they were standing in the clouds in front of the original weatherlight, and after Shauna told her that she can indeed see his illusion, although she knew it wasn't real due to her immunity to magic, Joyra agreed to allow the boy to join her crew. The three had returned to where the remains of the weatherlight were raised, only to find the ship fully restored. They found Tiana hanging out with an unknown vampire. The man introduced himself as Arvad, and immediately swore his service to Joyra. Before Tiana had any time to explain how she ran into Arvad, in a flash of golden light, the newest member of the crew appeared before them. A Johnny Goldmane had arrived. And that, you guys, is Chapter 3 of the official story for Dominaria. We see that the Weatherlight is starting to take shape, but this is no means the full extent of the new crew on this legendary ship. We know the members of the Gatewatch will eventually come into play as they reunite with Ajani, and of course, the hero of Dominaria, Squee, I mean, Tefiri, will be involved as well. But really, it's great we get a new version of the Weatherlight crew, a ragtag group of loose friends and remnants of the past. Will they be enough to stop Thousand Lock? Time will tell. Anyway, as with all the official lore videos, it's time to announce a new giveaway. Remember last week we gave away a copy of Gideon of the Trials and announced the winner via Twitter, so make sure you follow me there to know if you've won. That's at Simon Lore. 
This week, though, we'll be giving away a copy of Joyra of the Gitu, who is, of course, getting a new card in Dominaria, but, you know, it's always good to remember one's past. To enter for this giveaway, just leave a comment on this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and, of course, be a subscriber to the channel. The winner will be announced as the next official chapter goes live on the channel. Remember, you can get free cards from me literally all the time by supporting Vorthos through our Patreon. Get your name on my video's credits and win a bunch of free stuff while also supporting your favorite content. Check that out in the description below. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time here on the Ether Hub.